So I'll just start off in prayer. Thank you, God, for this um, day, and thank you that we can come here and worship you. Um, I just pray as I preach that I'll um, bring your words um, and that you'll give me the right words to say. Um, in your name, amen. So today we're going to um, be, I'm going to be preaching from 1 John uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. So, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, John begins this section of his letter by telling his reader that not every spirit is from God. In verse 1 he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone into the world. So, every teacher, Bible study leader, Christian speaking on YouTube, is a mouthpiece for some spirit. John here states that some of these people who claim to be Christians are false teachers. They are motivated by false spirits. But these aren't just false spirits, they are antichrists, as he states in verse 3. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. The antichrist or man of lawlessness is explained by Paul to be an individual that would ape Christ before the coming of Christ. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 to 10, Paul says, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. For the, for the man doomed to destruction, he will, be, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship. So that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs, wonders, and wonders that serve the lie, and all the ways of wickedness deceive those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. So here Paul claims that the man of lawlessness, who is the Antichrist, would set himself up as a fake god. Not only opposing God, but putting himself in God's temple and claiming that he is God. When he comes, not only will he deceive through words, but he will also perform signs and miracles. So in every way, he will be like God, but a deception that will cause men to perish. This Antichrist, though, will not only ape God in the last day, but he's also at work today. Now he is spreading disinformation and deceiving those that are perishing. John continues this idea, but believes that it is not only a single Antichrist, but many antichrists or false prophets. This, this idea would already be in the minds of John's readers, as he has already stated in 1 John uh, chapter 2, 18 and 20, that children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that antichrist is coming, so, many, so now many antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour, who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. 
John, though, not only says that there are, there are false teachers, but that there are also godly teachers who are influenced by the Spirit of God. In verse 2 of chapter 4, he says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. That is, every teacher who confesses Jesus as God is influenced by a spirit who is actually the Holy Spirit. So, given that a teacher can either be a mouthpiece for the Holy Spirit or a spirit of the Antichrist, we must test to see that it see what it if if it is a spirit of the Antichrist. So John in chapter four gives two tests to see if a teacher is the Antichrist. The first test stated in verse three is and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This means that every teacher who does not confess that Jesus is the Christ come in the flesh is a false teacher. An example of this um, was Serenthus. So Serenthus was an early heretic who many believe that this passage is referring to. In his book Against Heresies, Irenaeus, an early church historian, states, Serenthus, again, a man who was educated in the wisdom of the Egyptians, taught the world was not made by the primary God, but by a certain power far separated from him and at a distance from that principality who is the supreme over the universe and ignorant of him who is above all. He represented Jesus as having not been born of a virgin, but being the son of Joseph and Mary according to the ordinary course of human generation. While he nevertheless was more righteous, prudent and wise than any other man, Moreover, after his baptism, Christ descended upon him in the form of the dove from the supreme ruler, and that he proclaimed the unknown father and performed the miracles. But at last Christ departed from Jesus, and then, that then, Jesus suffered and rose again, while Christ remained impassable inasmuch as he was a spiritual being. So, Serenthus believed that Jesus only became the Christ or God at his baptism. And later, Christ left Jesus before Jesus died. Here, Serenthus thinks that Jesus is separate from Christ, where Jesus is the man and Christ is a spiritual being. John, though, is refuting this and saying that Jesus, and Christ, Jesus was Christ all along. That is, he was the incarnate word rather than just a normal human being. So the second test given in chapter 4 is in verse 5, where it says, They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. This means that false teachers are those who are popular in the world. Here, John is using the world to describe non-believers. Therefore, false teachers are so-called Christians who are popular among non-Christians. So, now that we know how to tell false teachers, how do we tell true teachers? John also gives two tests to tell whether or not a teacher is from God. Um, the first one is in verse 2 where he says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So a true teacher is one that believes that Jesus is the deity and comes in the flesh. More precisely, the confession is that Jesus is the Christ come in the flesh. So not Jesus was a man who was indwelled by the Christ for a period of time, like Serenthus believed. This doesn't mean purely acknowledgement of Jesus' deity, but rather a profession of faith in him. Um, and the reason for this is that even unclean spirits know that Jesus is God as shown in Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 24. Here Mark writes that, And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not, one, not as scribes. And immediately there was a synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know you are the Holy One of God. John also gives a second test in verses 4 and 6. Here he says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome him. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And in verse 6 it states, We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, firstly, in verse 4, John acknowledges that those he is writing to have the Holy Spirit and that through the Holy Spirit they have been able to discern who the false teachers are. Then in verse 6, John states that, that we, that is him and his fellow apostles, are from God. And whoever is from God listens to John and his fellow apostles. Put together, this means that whoever has given has been given the Holy Spirit, will see that the false teachers are of the world and that the apostles and what they teach are from God. Still today, people who are of God can discern who is, who is of the world, that is a false teacher, and the word of God, that is what the apostles taught, or the New Testament. So, in... Um, John uh, chapter 10 verses 11 to 18 Jesus further explains this or previously explained this by saying I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays, his, lays down his life for the sheep the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep so when he sees the wolf coming he abandons the sheep and runs away then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep I am the good shepherd. I know the sheep, and my sheep knows me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it up for me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This is a command I received from my Father. So, here Jesus is claiming that he is the good shepherd and his people are the sheep. Unlike the hired hands, Jesus looks after his sheep and his sheep knows what he says. So, given that the apostles are from Jesus and are speaking the words of Jesus, by extension, Jesus' sheep know them. So, what are we to do? All the apostles are dead. Well, verse 6 cannot be understood to be saying that we are the church, that the we, in verse 4, are the church, or the papacy, or tradition. Rather, it is the words of the apostles. And the only words of the apostles that we have are the New Testament. Thus, by extension, we should listen to the New Testament. So for us, we test, the biblical, we test the teacher by how consistent he or she is to the Bible. That being a piece of God, a person of God, is someone who takes the Bible as a central plank of revelation. In turn, that means we, as the children of God, must be rooted in the Bible. So, in summary, John 4, 1 to 6, 1 John 4, 1-6 is saying that not all spirits are from God. Some are false spirits. False teachers and false spirits are those who do not ground their beliefs in the Bible. True teachers, on the other hand, are those who get their beliefs from the Bible.